Hey everybody, welcome to Inside Quest. We're the elite training camp for your mind. Our goal is to bring on amazing people who can help you build your brain from good to great to unstoppable. And if you're looking to become the Michael Jordan of mental athletics, there's no better guest than the man joining us today. He is the very definition of relentless. When people told him he'd be lucky to turn his degree in kinesiology into a role as a high school gym teacher or health club manager, he insisted instead that he was going to train the most elite athletes on the planet, a statement he made come true through sheer force of will. Ultimately becoming one of the top trainers in the world, Internationally renowned for his work with hundreds of Hall of Famers, champions, and superstars, including Charles Barkley, Kobe Bryant, and Michael Jordan, he has an uncanny ability to peer into the human soul and identify what makes people tick. This unique ability has allowed him to push his clients beyond the traditional physical and mental barriers that hold back even the most seasoned competitors. Widely recognized as an unparalleled authority on the science and art of achieving physical and mental domination, he has authored multiple books, including my personal favorite, Relentless. In his books, blogs, interviews, formal talks, and idle dinner chatter, this man reveals psychological insights into the nature of elite performance that will leave you simultaneously gobsmacked and empowered with what you will need to take your own game to the next level. Whether you're trying to be the world's greatest parent, the next Steve Jobs, or MJ himself, the revelatory knowledge that this guy delivers on both the things that hold you back and the things that will set you free are guaranteed to propel you light years ahead of your competition. If you're willing to work for it, that is. And that's work in all caps. Please help me in welcoming the man Dwayne Wade has unbelievable trust and faith in, Kobe Bryant calls the master of mental toughness, and Michael Jordan said is second to none the world's greatest mind and body trainer, the founder and CEO of Attack Athletics, Tim Grover. Tom, how are you? Yeah. Good. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much. And we're gonna dive right into the deep end. That's how it always should be. And I wanna know what you learned about life from helping to disassemble a corpse with a bone saw. <laughs> Well, it's about as deep of the deep end as it, as it gets, I think. When I came across it, I was like, what the hell? Well, let me tell you the story behind that is when my father came over from India over to the States, he was a professor, but his credits didn't transfer over. The education said, well, it doesn't transfer over to the States. So, all right, he had to find a job in the university. So there was a position known as a degreaser. So what a degreaser is, after every quarter or every semester of anatomy school, they have to do something with the cadavers, okay? You just you can't roll them over into the next, into the next class. Right. You know, they're filled with formaldehyde and everything, so they weigh anywhere from four to 500 pounds. Whoa. So his job was to dismantle the cadaver, put it into the furnace, and then take the ashes out wow. and get disposable. So, at early age, my mom worked the night shift as a nurse, my dad worked the day shift, they couldn't afford a babysitter. So when we were off of school, guess what? Went to work with my dad. So at four years old, he would hand me a bone saw and say, hey, get to work. Wow. Okay? And he said, I want the lesson I'm teaching you, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do, but you got to always provide for your family. This is how I'm providing for my family. Lessons like that stick with you. For sure. One of the most powerful things in reading your book, your mindset comes through so clearly, and obviously just the history you have of success working with the highest level athletes, and um, it, it's, it's dizzying, and I only touched on truly a few of the people that you've helped. Um, but that mindset, I thought, it, it it had to come from somewhere, right? It didn't just develop out of nowhere. And I know that you reached out to Michael Jordan when you were 25 years old. I think most people would have been petrified to reach out to him, let alone be able to convince him, somebody who hadn't worked with an outside trainer ever before, to successfully convince him to work with you, someone unproven. I was like, where does this guy get the moxie to do it? And then I came across a story about the bone saw. Do you think that's played into your mindset? Oh, there's no, qu no question, no question about it. I mean, you have to be prepared to take any and every opportunity that's presented to you. 
All right, nothing's just going to happen. You know, everybody say it's all on you. It is all on you. There's other people that can educate you and help you, but you take these different experiences that you learn that stick with you. I mean, you may not remember a whole lot when you were four years old, but there's certain memories, there's certain things. You can use them to either harness you to greatness or you can use them to kind of just keep you where you're at. And most people are just satisfied with ad. There's always a next level. Your definition of greatness and what you want to achieve could be totally different than somebody else's. You know, we always say, no one wants to be first, okay, because they're afraid of the consequences that come with doing something first. You know, we go to Michael Jordan. Everyone, when Michael Jordan took over the uh, Charlotte team, okay, everyone says he's a failure. Well, how can you be a failure when you're the first professional athlete to own a majority of a franchise team? Can't be a failure. You're the first to do something. If you're the first to do something, you can't be listed as a failure. I wanted to be the first to do something, and that was to work with high, high-end professional athletes. The interesting thing about that is you talk about the margin for growth is actually really slim because you're taking, and I love the subtitle of the book, which is from good to great to unstoppable. And you said, look, I, I'm called in to help the guys that are already great. So these are people at the top of their game and I've got to come in and very quickly deliver results. And you talked about that very eloquently with uh, Michael Jordan. You talked about it with Dwayne Wade when they're calling you in, he's already in the finals. Um, and he's having knee problems and how you had to, to deliver so quickly. How do you um, eke out that last little bit of performance out of these people so quickly? Your preparation has to be second to none. So when an athlete calls up, the time that you have between when you have to deliver that result and the performance in between. You literally have to educate yourself on everything that athlete or that person has done in the last three to five years. So you have to know what kind of workout they've been doing, what's been working for them, who they've been working with, what's not been working for them. Are they having issues at home? How is their family life? So you have a literally a short period of time to process as much information as you can and figure out how to put that piece together to get that end result extremely quickly. We have tons of information available to us, okay? But the difficult part is we don't have a lot of individuals who have the ability to process information at a quick rate. The ones that can excel, and we call them cleaners in the book, they're so well prepared at their task, no matter what variable is thrown at them, what circumstance, they can adjust and they can get that end result. And that's taking something that an individual who's just in a playoff situation, you literally get off the plane, you have an hour to figure out what's going on, how to fix it. It might only be a temporary fix, but it's going to get you the end result for that particular game. Most people, when the game ends or they sign a contract, they exhale. The champions never exhale. Right. So the, the thing that I want to get back to is that notion of levels, right? There's levels to this stuff, and people define success in their own way. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys haven't already, read the book, Relentless. You will love it. It will be transformational for you. Getting to enjoy this man's mindset page after page after page, absolutely incredible. And we'll get into some of the more controversial stuff later, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but first, you have to define those three, the coolers, the closers and the cleaners so that the the context of everything as we talk will play out for everybody in professional sports everybody always said oh he's a closer and they said that's the top level of a of a competitor and i always thought well working with michael i said comparing him to everybody else and putting him in a category as a closer along with all the other players I said, that's an insult. I see what this man goes through. I've seen his uh, preparation. Uh, you know, I don't like to use the word legendary with him because he's not a legend. He's an icon. There's a lot of legends out there. There's only one icon. He's an icon. For okay? sure. So when you talk about these different individuals, we have a cooler as an individual, and this could not only be in sports, it could be in work and so forth. And if you can identify these personalities as a boss or as a director, it will help your company succeed tremendously because you know what you can get out of these individuals. So a cooler is a person that you give a job to and you're gonna get 
the desired result. You're not going to get anything exceptional. You're not going to get anything outstanding. You're going to give them something to do. They're going to deliver a result that's expected. Okay? And there's, not, and there's nothing wrong with that. Every team and every organization needs, needs coolers on them. Then when we have closers, closers are a level above that. Closers are people that you give a task to, you give an assignment, they're going to deliver you that end result majority of the time as long as too many variables are not thrown at them. A cleaner is an individual, what we call a don't think person. They're so well prepared at what they do. They spend hours and hours of time, years of getting prepared that no matter what's thrown at them, they're going to deliver that end result over and over again. Their instincts are so dead on that no matter what variable, what problem, they can adjust on the fly and have the ability to get themselves in what we call the zone. The problem is in order to be able to put yourself in the zone, preparation is the key. It's, it's one thing that I really want you guys to take away and anybody that has the guts to read his book, the thing that I think it does most profoundly is it paints a picture of the mentality of the cleaner. And it was something, when, when he first starts going through it, you think, closer, yeah, 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 baby, I'm a closer. And then he's like, but that's not the level you wanna be at, you wanna be a cleaner. And you're like, oh man, shit. Like, <laughs> I was feeling good a second ago about being a closer, and now you know, I'm not where I need to be. And getting into that mentality of, you're not doing it for anybody else. And he uses some really amazing examples. Some of them are pretty famous. Um, the one about Michael Jordan's very powerful where, if you guys don't know Michael Jordan, after everything he's done, it's utterly incredible. His career will live forever. He's iconic, truly. Um, and he gives a, a speech when he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame and some people are horrified by it because he was still like jabbing at people and people are like, what the hell? Like you're the greatest player of all time. How is this not like a humble speech about you know coming up and not at all. And your commentary on it was Michael Jordan knows who he is. Michael Jordan's not worried about what you think. Like Michael Jordan has a vision in his own head about what he's trying to do and he is trying to live up to that every day. And that was so freeing and so powerful to think I could take control of the vision that I have for my life, that I could live in accordance with what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to execute on. I do not have to think about the rest of the world and that actually I'm held back until I do that. No it's incredibly powerful. Yeah, you are, we're try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, certain frats, certain sororities, you know, among certain friends. Yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure. Okay because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure, okay? We've all failed at things. I'm gonna continue to fail at stuff, right? It's the most powerful tool you can use, but it all depends on how you use it. You know, we talk about it in Relentless, okay? A scalpel, okay? In the hands of an individual, it can do unbelievable damage. In the hands of a professional, of a doctor, it saves lives. So it's the same thing with failure. It's how you use it. It's that drive inside of you, okay? It's what we talk about, the dark side. The dark side is filled with failure but it's the fuel that burns you like something that's never burned inside you before. That scalpel story is incredibly powerful and is an amazingly useful reminder that I'm grateful for you giving me, thank you. Uh, I will be using that uh, because you're right. And you actually have another quote about that and you say the only difference between um, criticism and feedback is how you take it. And I thought that was really powerful as well. Again, just always going back to the mindset. And guys, one thing, um, man, this, I'm trying to give you a gift and I hope that it comes across because it's a, it's a really subtle difference. Follow me here. Have you seen Pulp Fiction? All right, so you know the wolf, right? The guy that cleans up the mess when they shoot the guy in the face? Uh, that's this man. 
And that's what he teaches people. And that's literally, like when he said cleaner, that was instantly the image that I had, was the guy, when it all goes wrong, when your top guys bottom out and the shit hits the fan, or the brains in that case, hits the fan, there's one guy you call, and you know no matter what, you don't have to tell him what the situation is, he's gonna roll and he's gonna fix it, right? And you've talked a lot about that, that that's when people bring you in, in, in case of emergency break glass, right? And that's when people come to you. I, I'm, the, I'm never the first call. I'm the last, last call <laughs> the person makes, okay? Because when you have to make this call, there's a problem, because that means they can't figure it out. Now it becomes my job to figure it out and it's my job to deliver because if I don't deliver, okay, not only will the last call not happen, that phone will not ring again because I'm only as good as the last delivery that I've done. And that's how everybody needs to think. You can't talk about what you did five years ago. You can't talk about the uh, deal that you closed last week, okay? You can't talk about your sales for last month, okay? Those things are expected of you. Don't expect to get a pat on back for doing your job. You're supposed to do your job, okay? I don't, you know, now, I don't know if anybody else has kids out here, but now they're giving you, they're giving you trophies for participation, you know? 16th place, okay? Imagine your kid bringing home a trophy for 16th place. Where are you gonna put it? <laughs> if you're getting rewarded just for showing up, Imagine what that's gonna to do to you later in life. Now when you do something extraordinary, it doesn't quite feel the same. The reason that I brought that up and the gift that I wanna give you guys is if you watch his interviews, and please do yourself a favor, watch his interviews and really read his blogs. Um, when you watch his interviews, people always ask him about the athletes that he's trained. And that to me is missing the point. This is the guy that teaches other people to be the cleaner, but he's the cleaner himself. When people ask about Jordan, when they ask about Dwayne Wade, when they ask about Kobe Bryant, this hero worship, and you can hear it in their reactions, right, to the stories that he tells. It's people who want a little bit of gossip. It's not people who are wringing the truth out of every word that he has to say. So put him in context of that, because my goal in this interview, and I will have failed if I don't get this, is to live your life backwards. Because seeing your results, listening to your mindset, I have the chills just thinking about it. So I, I told you at dinner, so every guest has to be approved by me, and I get pitched, and they sit me down, and they show me things that the person has written, video clips if they have it, and I normally need to see a few things before I can decide if the guest is really gonna help you free you from the matrix, right? And honestly, like if I'm gonna research this guy, it needs to move the company forward, otherwise it can't just, uh, justify the time. So I've gotta be learning something from it. When they showed me his, literally, it was like 15 seconds. I was like, oh my God, no question, that guy is a no-brainer. Like, if you can give me something usable in 15 seconds, you're my kind of guy. And going into his book, like the mentality of what it takes to win, I, I will only promise this, there is absolutely not a shred of bullshit. You may hate some of the things, in fact, you're going to hate some of the things that he says because you're not gonna wanna do them. And he is gonna paint an amazing picture of what it would be like to really be a cleaner. Not to pretend to be a cleaner, but to actually be a cleaner. And you're gonna be like me. I fucking wanna be a cleaner. I wanna be like that. I wanna get those results. And then he's gonna tell you what you have to do to get it. And you're gonna have to ask yourself whether or not you're prepared to pay that price. So we are all now going to turn to this man and we are gonna ask him one simple question. Are you a cleaner? I'm past a cleaner now. Oh, we're, already work, we're already working on next. <laughs> We're, we're already working on next level stuff. All right, okay. so take me back. How, how, walk me through the steps. Were you ever a cooler? Or at six with the bones on your hand, we sort of skipped the cooler phase. I don't know if, I don't know if I ever was a cooler, okay? I don't know, I think the mentality is, I think before the bone saw incident and having to see what my parents went through to provide for the family, so to make sure we have a better life than they had, those things resonate with you. When you first talked about this, when everybody said, oh, I'm gonna take a course in kinesiology, this is what I'm gonna do, it's the movement of the muscles. Oh, you're gonna be a gym teacher. No, I'm not gonna be a gym teacher. I got a different plan. So what are you gonna do? I played college basketball. I said, you know what? I know I'm not good enough to be a professional basketball player, okay? I knew that at an early, at an early stage. 
All now, right. was that talent or skill that you lacked? Both. Okay. I got to as far as I could from my athletic ability and my talent and my skill level. For me to play at a Division I level was as far as I was able to take this. And that's when we talk about relentless. Relentless isn't about your physical traits. It's about your mental trait. No one is going to play basketball like Michael Jordan. There's individuals out in the NBA, the top guys, they're never going to play basketball like that. But his mindset can be taught to everybody. That's something we all can take away from it. So when I really made the transition from, yeah, I'm sure at some point I was a cooler, I was a closer, my transition came in when I said, I'm going to stop playing basketball. My career is over with. For most people, that's the end. For me, that was just the beginning. That's when my whole transformation started into getting into the cleaner mentality. How am I going to be an individual who's never played professional basketball or a professional sport, never going to, to be able to take the greatest athletes in the world and tell them, this is how you can do it better? Could you imagine that? Somebody who's never scored a single basket in the NBA is taking the world's greatest individuals and telling them, this is what you're doing wrong, this is how you can do it better. And I don't have a whole lot of time and a whole lot of words to get my message across. The truth is very concise, the words are very few. But people don't want to hear the truth, because the truth hurts, okay? But you grow from pain, you really, you really do. You can't know how to deal with success. You can't know how to deal with failures. You can't know how to deal with the bumps in the road that if you haven't had a taste of everything. Okay? And once you remember that bitter taste in your mouth, you never want to feel that again. All right, so take me into that moment because I want to make it useful for them. You realize you're not going to play professionally, but I imagine until that moment, that was the path you wanted to be on. Mm -hmm. Did it have anything to do with when you blew your knee out? It had a lot to do with when, uh, when I blew my knee out. Okay, so we're in physical pain. We're in physical pain, but when I blew my knee out, all right, it, that was actually the start, unknowingly, of my career as, I don't like to consider myself, as the other words, I don't like to consider myself as a trainer, okay? I, I'm not a trainer, okay? Quest is not just a bar, okay? okay? There's a, lot, there's a lot of people that are just a something. There's very few people that are the something, okay? So when, I, if, when people introduce myself as a trainer, I'm like, no, I'm not a trainer, I'm the trainer. It's a huge difference, okay? That was my path into becoming the trainer. It probably is the worst thing that can happen to an athlete. It's the best thing that happened to me from a developmental standpoint because now it forced me to study the body like no one had ever studied it before, to feel the pain and discomfort that an athlete who blows out his knee, who blows out his shoulder, now I know what they have to deal with, not only from a physical standpoint, but from a mental standpoint. Now I knew what was going on up in here, so I could push them beyond the barriers, okay? And what is going on in the mind? Because you're really freakishly able to, in your book, you paint such a clear and what I consider an accurate picture of the mental gyrations people go through. What's happening? You've just blown your knee, the path you thought you were headed down goes away. It sounds like you made a very fast transition, but enough of dealing with the pain and uncertainty and all that lingered for you to be able to see it in other people and translate. So what is happening in the mind? It starts to scatter. You know, you, you, got, you got neuron patterns flying all over the place. You know, we talk about, the way I try to bring it down is everyone talks about when they're doing something, when they're nervous or something, oh, I get butterflies. I get butterflies in my stomach, okay? And it happens to everybody, okay? Well, guess what? If you get the butterflies all moving in the same direction, you've won the battle. So now from a mental standpoint, if I can get all the thoughts moving in towards one direction, instead of feeling sorry for myself, instead of putting the blame on other individuals, instead of feeling guilty, those are all emotions, okay? And emotions make you weak, okay? I'm already in a weakened state. I don't need to be weaker, 
And okay. is that what you're telling yourself at the time? Yeah. I'm just like, okay, this happened. I need to figure it out. Kobe Bryant blew out his Achilles. Okay. Every other individual, they would carry off the floor. Okay. He went up, shot two free throws, made them both, walked himself off the court. Okay. That's pretty impressive. The process of the rehabilitation started the moment he got up. If he would have had somebody carry him off the court, if he would have not shot those free throws, he lost that battle. Right. So even what everybody else thought he was losing, he actually gained. The reckoning process, the healing process started immediately when he stood up. I'm gonna to go to the free throw line, I'm gonna go make these two free throws. That's how a cleaner thinks, okay? We all have that ability. We all have next level ability. Okay. There's not other people that aren't holding you back. Your boss isn't holding you back. Your parents aren't holding you back. Those are excuses. To me, there's no such thing as luck, okay? All luck is preparation meeting opportunity, plain and simple. You have to be ready, prepared for that situation. Everybody runs from pressure, okay? It's easy to blame somebody else, to play armchair quarterback, to say, oh yeah, if they would have ran this play, this would have happened. Pressure is a privilege. If you're an employee of this company and the boss puts you into a pressure situation, that's a privilege. He believes in you. You better deliver, because if you don't, that situation goes to somebody else, and you may never get that opportunity again. Michael used to tell people, first day of training camp, every single time, grab the guys together and say, I'm gonna pass you the ball one time. If you don't do anything with it, I'm not giving it to you again because I can miss a shot on my own, I can throw a pass away on my own. I can do that on my own. He was testing the guys to see if I pass you the ball into a, into a critical pressure situation, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna fumble it? Are you gonna throw it away? Are you gonna pass it back to me like a scared individual? It transcends whatever you're doing. It's not a switch you turn it on and off. Cleaner switches don't need to be turned and off, okay? There's no such thing as beast mode. They're just beasts. There is no mode. Right. Going back to the, the point you were making about getting more playing time, I really hope you guys are hearing him. So he talks a lot about the truth is hard, sometimes the truth is painful to hear, but if you can accept it, you can do something about it, right? And the thing that really hit me uh, about more playing time is you're not getting more playing time because you're not good enough. That's the, the simple hard fact. And I want you to love that fact, right? I want you guys to love that it's, it is completely in your control and it's completely identifiable. And it's only when people don't want to believe that very simple truth. And if you guys know Occam's razor, right? The simplest answer is usually the right answer. The simplest answer is probably not some big conspiracy against you or the department that you're in or whatever. It's you're not doing a good enough job. Steve Martin wrote a book called Be So Good They Can't Ignore You. That's the only advice you can ever give. Just be so good they can't ignore you. And that's such a huge piece of advice that you give people, that preparation, that you're gonna get that opportunity to perform, but you've gotta do something with it. That's so, so important. And it, it's liberating. And until you hear that that's liberating, if you hear that as a smackdown or a frustrating thing in life, you're forever screwed because you're trapped by your own mentality. The moment you realize that that is completely empowering, that, okay, awesome, I'm underperforming. I can identify that, right? He blows his knee. And if you guys get into that story, read the book, get into the story, blows his knee, ends his career, makes this immediate shift, I'm gonna have to go do something else but immediately begins identifying the gap in skill set between who he is today and who he has to become to execute on that and does so, so aggressively, which is the only right word. Like he attacks it with all his soul and people, in fact, how'd you get the name Attack Athletics? Where'd Attack come well, from? Well, that's, you know what, everybody, you gotta attack a situation and only to get successful at, at anything, all right? <laughs> Either you're being attacked or you're attacking. I'd rather be the person that's attacking. Okay, 
we attack a situation, we see a client, we go, we go after it, all right? We're the aggressors, okay? We're the ones that are gonna get you to back, get you to backpedal, okay? Because there's never gonna be a standoff, all right? Either somebody's gonna be taking a step forward or someone's gonna be taking a step backwards, all right? So the whole, our whole situation from a physical and mental standpoint is attack whatever you're doing. Attack that situation, have that attacking mentality. And that, that's, what, that's, that's the difference between those individuals that like really, really make it and the other ones that just make it. Tell them, you bring up the word just, tell them why only and just are such incredibly dangerous words. I like to use examples on that. If you would have gotten into Quest, are you developing only a bar, developing just a bar? You're dealing with accounts, okay? I just lost one sale. Okay. Everything matters. If you take any situation and just take the word only and take the word just out of it, it changes the whole phrase. It's just a game. It's a game. It's only a job. If you feel like this is an only a job, before this interview is up, I advise you to get up and leave right now. Because there's somebody else who'll fill this seat up and take that job and turn it into a career. Be careful of those words, trap words. I'm just gonna smoke one cigarette. Well, that shows you their preparation from a mental standpoint of how weak they really are. Super powerful. Um, along those lines, you have a, a really great quote. It's a little long, so bear with me. The indulgence has <laughs> really hit me, and I think it's incredibly powerful. It's very important for these guys to hear. Um, this is you, obviously. There's no shortage of great athletes who rack up impressive scores and then turn out to be total busts. Why? Because raw athletic ability is a terrible predictor of how an athlete will perform when it counts. It counts when you're under the lights, surrounded by screaming fans, facing intense opposition in a pressure situation, with everything on the line, at game speed, in a completely uncontrolled environment. Over the years, these great athletes have received so much attention for their natural talent that they don't bother developing their skills. They believe talent is enough. It is not. So if talent's not enough, what is? There's so many individuals out there that are so talented in different things that never accomplish anything. Okay, the world is filled with talented people. You know a lot of them yourselves. Okay, and they never accomplish anything. With talent has to come preparation, has to come action, has to come development of being able to take those talents, take those skills, continue to develop them, continue to sharpen them physically, continue to sharpen them mentally, because at some point, your physical talent is going to diminish as a professional athlete. That's just a fact, okay? But what keeps that competitive edge, what keeps you on top is the ability to think and prepare mentally over and over and over again. The body has limitations, the mind does not. We focus so much on what goes on from the neck down that we forget it all starts from here. Everything starts from here. If you're not mentally ready, you're never really physically prepared. And that's where the preparation starts. I firmly believe that everybody in this room, everybody on this planet has a gift. It's your job to figure out what that gift is. Then it becomes your job to decide whether you're going to act on that or not. Everyone sees the work that you put in but it's what you don't see is gonna determine how far you're gonna get. 
I, I, I hear stuff all the time. People say, oh, look in the mirror and you'll see why you're not succeeding. I don't believe that, okay? It's what you don't see in the mirror. That's what's holding you back. It's what you're not willing to see is why talent is not enough. And when you, when you finally see it and accept it and decide to work on it, then you can take that next level. Tim, that is the perfect <laughs> thought to leave these guys with, man. Thank you so much for My being pleasure. on the show. Absolutely incredible. Mm. Guys, I'm telling you, this was one of those times where the more I researched him, the more fascinated and empowered I became. Do yourself a favor, read the book, Relentless. It is absolutely incredible. Merely letting the words trickle across your brain will change you in fundamental ways, and by the time you are done, you will want to do nothing more than act. You know my thing, acting is all that matters. You're gonna hear that in the book over and over and over. It is absolutely brilliant. You will be moved. Now. The best part is, after that, you still have his blog articles to read. You've got to read this blog. They're absolutely amazing. They are nuggets of just wisdom. Check them out. He's got a no bullshit style. It's super direct, super to the point. You will love it. It will make your life better. I guarantee it. Check it out. Um, you can find him at attackathletics.com, and you can also find him at... Uh, well, on Twitter, we're at, at Attack Athletics, and also on Instagram, at Attack Athletics. So follow us. We'll give you a little bit of information every single day. You may not agree with it, you may not like it, but trust me, you need to read it and you'll understand. It's gonna impact your life. Guys, it's a weekly show. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe here. And if you don't know, you can get this as a podcast on iTunes, you can drop it into Stitcher or whatever the case may be. And if you wanna be in this beautiful, beautiful audience, let us know, we'll get you tickets uh, and we will get you in here. We love meeting the fans of the show, taking your questions, so please come on in. Uh, after we part ways here, we do an inside question segment. And if you're in the audience, you can actually get your questions answered. Until next time, my friends, be iconic. Damn, man. That was amazing. Thank you so much. You made it so easy. Coming up next, inside questions. How has being the leader affected your pricing and the rate that you charge for your services relative to other people in the space? The people that need my services, they think I don't charge enough. The people that don't need my services think I charge too much. Okay? After I'm done with the work, I give them the bill and they're more than happy to pay it. And then it usually the situation comes, I should have done this a long time, a long time ago.